the Parliamentary Secretary for Finance and the Nunavut Deputy Minister of Executive and Intergovernmental Affairs were at the Iqaluit Airport to announce another pot of funding for Nunavut's airlines today. This one for three million. And as we stand together in Canada's northernmost city, I don't have to tell anyone here why it's so important for those transportation networks to remain strong and for communities to stay connected. And we'll be back. Nunavut has received over $30 million to support private airlines with public money since COVID-19 hit. Every community in Nunavut is a fly-in community. The airlines are the lifeline to the rest of the country. According to this Nunavut deputy minister, the system was closer to collapse than most of us knew. Early in the pandemic, we were very close to losing scheduled air service to most Nunavut communities. It's not an exaggeration to say we were hours or, or days away from, from losing this link. Right now, there's an airline fuel shortage in four Nunavut high Arctic communities. As usual, Nunavut's various crises impact each other. It turns out that when Iqaluit's water system was shut down late last year, the disruption was felt in the high Arctic. So as you'll remember, for several months, we were flying in water uh, to Iqaluit and uh, using up all the resources here. Um, what that led to uh, airlines having to route around Iqaluit and use a lot more fuel than they would normally in places like Pond Inlet, Diglulik, uh, Kugar. Um, so a lot of the assumptions that we used in order uh, of how much fuel would be used we're kind of thrown out the window by the, by the water emergency. It's hard to overestimate how much Nunavut relies on airlines. They're the ambulance. They fill the grocery stores. COVID-19 showed us just how fragile that link is. And more funding today shows that subsidizing Nunavut's airlines could outlast the pandemic. Kent Driscoll, APTN National News, Halloween.